it is uh, taking that little time during the day to address those parts of us that we can't see. Um, we spend a lot of time taking care of our bodies and feeding our bodies and dealing with emails and the world around us and all the things that we can see and measure. And then we need some time to take care of those things or be with those things we can't see, like our breath or the feeling of quieting the mind or the feeling of um, maybe meditating on compassion or on contemplation on God, contemplation on consciousness, contemplation on love. All these things that we can't see and we can't measure. And so in the yoga practices and in meditation, that's a lot of the world that we're in. We're in the world of things that can't be measured. To be in that space without measuring stuff and trying to figure stuff out for a little while because there is no figuring it all out. We can only figure it out up to a certain point, and then the thing we figured out, well, it might change, or there'll be something else to try to figure it out. That's where the idea of surrender comes in. To know the limits of how far we can get on our own steam, and at what point do we have to give up and have the faith or confidence that something else is gonna help us along. There are a lot of people meditating, a lot of people doing something like yoga, a lot of people going to church. So there must be some drive in us, in all human beings, which lead us towards contemplating or praying or worshiping or being quiet in one way or another. Aristotle and Plato and the you know, Jain monks and the yogis, they all questioned, they all contemplated. Some of them left society so they could contemplate these things. This has been going on for thousands of years. It's not new for us to be doing this. It's part of us to be doing this. I don't think that there really will be necessarily a better something, um, a better world, a more peaceful world. And it's not that I'm some kind of a fatalist or something, but it seems like there's always been a lot of violence in the world. There's always been political upheaval. There's always been financial problems and financial crises. Look to anywhere, there's always been something which has been either a famine, a scourge, a plague, a terrible king, overrun by foreign countries coming in and destroying everything. This has been going on for a long time, and we're no different. But there's always been some small groups of people who say, I don't want to take part in this kind of a way. And so I'm going to try to be a kinder person, a more thoughtful person. I'm gonna think about the world that I live in. I'm gonna think about my actions in the world. And I'm gonna try to be more loving. And there's always been some small groups of people throughout the ages and throughout time who have decided to do this. The yogis are one of those groups. And their longevity in terms of the practice staying alive has been remarkable. The practice of yoga might look a little bit different now, but the idea behind it is essentially the same. I don't want to take part in the world in the same way that I see it causing a lot of suffering to people. I want to take part in the world in such a way that it creates more happiness, more kindness, more thoughtfulness, more care. So we need that quiet time to experience those things. It just serves to make our life a little bit more stable um, and make our perception a little bit more clear.
and give us a greater appreciation that everyone around us is also going through that same struggle.